20 of the biggest blunders you must avoid at all costs, from farming fiascos to friendship fails, time to spill the beans on what not to do in Stardew Valley. You already know that fairy roses are incredible, placing these near bee houses will turn your regular trash honey into pure profit honey. You can make millions of gold with a honey empire on either your farm or even on your ginger island farm. However, not all flower honey is made equally, almost every type of flower honey is worthless. However, this is still much better than placing flower honey into a keg to create mead. Never do this with flower honey, it's almost never worth it. The only honey you should be turning into alcohol is regular worthless honey and nothing else. Leave a comment saying I understand. At some point in your playthrough you are going to get tired of your bland and maybe even boring farm. Fortunately there are many ways for us to decorate our farm and make them look incredible. Mostly with furniture, you can buy furniture from Robin and the Travelling Merchant and you can buy flooring and wallpaper from Pierre. But just don't do that, that is a terrible investment. What if you buy a couch and it just sucks? Instead save up and buy the furniture catalogue from Robin and the flooring catalogue from Pierre. Yes they are expensive but they are also worth it. These will give you unlimited access to most of the furniture in the game allowing you to truly mix and match until you find true perfection. You just harvested 100 star fruit and turned them all into wine. Wow, look at you. Next, you dropped every single star fruit wine that you had into a cask in your basement to age them and dramatically increase their value. Why would you do that? You know that it takes a massive 56 days to fully age these to iridium quality. Now you have no money and you can't buy any seeds. Instead, age half of your wine and sell the other half. Then you'll immediately get some money that you can then use to buy more seeds. Keep doing this until you are making more wine then you can even age then do whatever you want remember it takes money to make money invest wisely fairy dust looks amazing right it can instantly finish anything with the exception of aging wine you can use fairy dust to guarantee that you get a solar panel on the next day you can instantly turn fruit into wine and even burn ores into precious metals you can also use a single serving of fairy dust on your cars to age them from gold to rhythm quality saving you 28 days this all sounds good right yeah until you find out what fairy dust is worth it takes a diamond and a fairy rose to craft a single serving of fairy dust while that might not sound that good if you sold those items instead Instead, you would make close to 1000 gold and in the best case scenario you would make 1600 gold so is it still worth it knowing how much money you could have made let me know Okay, so we have established that fairy roses can sell for a decent amount, all the way up to 640 gold each in the case of iridium quality. That's not bad, right? So what if we planted these on our farm with the intention to sell them for profit? That'll work, right? Well, it could. However, this is terrible and not for the reason you are expecting. Look at this. Look at how much space these idiotic flowers take in your inventory. One space for each color and one space for each quantity, meaning a single harvest can take up to 16 inventory slots. That is is ridiculous not worth the effort in my opinion the next one is going to sound like a stretch but just trust me okay there are many many incredible items that you can only find inside of those chests in the volcano you will sometimes find a chest earlier into your volcano adventure and you are guaranteed to find a chest on floor 9 unfortunately the volcano cannot be reset so it will take you a while to find exactly what you are looking for but there is a very simple way to increase your odds of getting good loot this is a golden coconut cracking these open will get you some rather good loot however as soon as you crack open a single golden coconut you will start to find them in the chests in the volcano. If you never crack one open, all of the other items will have a higher likelihood of appearing. So hold off on cracking open golden coconuts until you get what you need from those chests. Simple, right? Your inventory is super limited, especially in the early game when you have not upgraded it yet. Yeah, 12 slots is nothing and it will most definitely hold you back. However, you should avoid buying the first upgrade. This sounds like horrible advice, but just hear me. The 13th of spring is the annual egg festival. This festival is fun and easy to win, but wait, there's more. You can buy strawberry seeds from this festival. If you did not upgrade your inventory, you will have enough gold to buy an extra 20 seeds. That is a very good investment. You can upgrade your inventory after the festival spend your early game money wisely strawberries aside the annual egg festival has a little game where you need to find some hidden eggs but instead of winning let's absolutely crush our enemies use this route to get 15 eggs you only need nine to win but why stop there destroying our enemies is the only way to win the greater the margin you win by the better 
Dragon teeth are hard to find, especially if you accidentally destroy them with bombs, defeat lava lurkers with a slingshot and let hot heads explode on them. Even if you avoid all of these stupid mistakes that I make, they are still somewhat rare. So never, and I mean never craft island warp totems, yeah. Using Willy's boat is tedious, slow and a waste of money. Island warp totems are an even bigger waste. Rather stockpile and hoard those dragon teeth until you can build an island warp totem. Now this thing is worth every penny, get it sooner rather than later. Ever caught many fish and been forced to decide which fish you are going to throw back into the water so that you have enough inventory space? Yeah, just don't do that. Releasing a fish back into the wild is a waste. You could be eating that fish or selling it to someone else to eat. Chests, that's right, just use chests. Put them at your favorite fishing spots and never be wasteful again. Why the f are you selling quartz? Yeah, you could sell these and make a tiny profit and yes, you could very easily duplicate them and maybe even make a decent amount of money. But it's still a terrible idea. Did you know that you can drop these into a furnace to create three servings of refined quartz? That's right, I did not misspeak. Three servings of refined quartz, that is just unmatched. Regular quartz cannot compare and neither can recycling. Is this you, a hoarder? More specifically, a disorganized hoarder that spends countless hours a day looking for something specific? Nothing wrong with being a hoarder, but at least be an organized hoarder. Fortunately, you can fix this with signs. Look at this, you will know exactly where anything is without any issues. This is the way of the hoarder. This is how I live. Speed grow is great. Naturally, you should be leveraging speed grow to drastically increase your output and potential profits. But never, ever support Pierre and buy deluxe speed grow from him. He is a scammer. He is trying to scam you. Don't be fooled. Rather buy speed grow from Sandy at the Desert Oasis for 80 gold on Thursdays. Don't allow yourself to be scammed. Controversial opinion incoming iridium sprinklers are garbage. Okay, wait, they are not bad. They are just not as good as you think. You might think that they are twice as efficient as regular sprinklers because that is what it looks like. However, if you were to utilize the same amount of land with the same square area, then they are in fact only 7% more effective than regular sprinklers. There's a bunch of supporting math to prove this, so let me know if you want a dedicated video explaining this. Trash is not trash, I am serious, don't just throw those trash items you collect from fishing into the bin, instead place them into recycling machines. You can get wood, torches and even refined quartz. You know what would be an amazing idea if we placed a bunch of processing machines into the quarry mines, kegs, preserve jars, furnaces, just shove all of them into the quarry mines. And while we are at it, why not place some on the elevator floors in the mines, look the game lets you place processing machines here. Don't do this, I'm just kidding, don't do this, this is a horrible idea, you should never do that. If you do decide to do this, they will all be destroyed when you sleep, yes I am sad, so much wasted space in the quarry mines, what the hell. There are so many key special order requests, some of them are really fun, most of them will greatly reward you with lucrative key gems, and then there are some that are just plain garbage. Yeah, the special order request that actually expects you to donate 4 prismatic shards, avoid that quest like the plague, it just cannot be worth it, it just can't. This is going to sound obvious, but it is important. Luck affects many things in the game. Fortunately, it doesn't affect everything. However, the mine is one of those things that is considerably affected. Mining on a bad luck day is going to make you have a bad day. You will find fewer ladders, fewer treasure floors, and most importantly, you will be less likely to land a critical strike. Leave the mines for good luck days. Those are the 20 things you should never do in Stardew Valley, but check out this video with 15 things you might not know about Stardew Valley. Thanks for watching, but for now, I will see you in the next video.